I know Dr. Octopus. And you, sir, I know Dr. Octopus. Knock, knock. Who's there? Doc Ock. Knock, knock, Doc Ock? <laughs> Fools! Pre-order all your action figures at Dorkside Toys. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Hasbro Spider-Man Legends Demogoblin wave. Demogoblin? 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 Either way, I got the whole wave in at the same time from Dorkside Toys, and you know what I do when that happens. I got to look at the whole wave. I can't just pick and choose and, oh, this one will go this day. And the, I got to have them all. I got to get them open. I got to play with them. This wave consists of Superior Octopus, Shang-Chi, Marvel's Vulture, Gamerverse Spider-Man Spider Armor Mark III. I had to look at the back to see what it's actually called. Marvel's White Rabbit. Go ask Alice when she's six inches tall. And then Gamerverse Spider-Man Velocity Armor. And then the build figure is Demogoblin. It's a Spider-Man wave, but there's not a classic type Spider-Man in it. We get these two versions from the PlayStation game. I now have played it, but I guess I didn't get this far or I didn't change up my costumes enough to know or be familiar with this. But with Spider-Verse, you can take anything remotely related to Spider-Man and put it on your Spider-Man shelf. So I have no problem with this whatsoever. But because of that unfamiliarity, I'm going to open one of these first. And I think I'm going with this one. Getting it out of the package, it's... <laughs> It's exactly what it says it is. It's a spider armor. Very Iron Man-ish in parts, but not too overly Iron Man-ish. When you think of armor in the Marvel Universe, you automatically go to Iron Man. With Spider-Man here, it's a little bit streamlined to his abilities. In fact, it looks like costume under some armor bits. It's not full armor. There's some seam lines in the costume, a little bit flat there, but then it brings in a texture on this chest piece that works back here into the spider symbol. In fact, it's the same for all the red bits and bobs, although like on the arms, the legs, down here on the boots. It's a little bit more subtle than what it is on the chest. It still matches. It's still cool looking. That texture follows the red around this blue shoulder pad. It's on the back of the belt. The black isn't without detail, but it's kind of techy and kind of sparse until you get to the crotch. And apparently there's some extra padding there. Well, who wouldn't want extra padding there? Because of the added texture that almost matches the red. So it's bulky in spots, especially at the forearms. And well, <laughs> bulky is the wrong word. My personal preference, there's a little bit too much black here. There's some blue, there's some red, but the major color is black. But I do like the contrast of matte black for the costume, and then on the armor, it is a gloss black. That's a nice little detail they threw in there. And then up at the head, I, it, mm, what am I going to say here? I just talked about all the texture on the red parts below the neck, and then you get above, and it's smooth. And I understand it would look weird with texture up there, but the smoothness kind of works against the rest of the armor, makes it kind of stand out a little bit. Which, really, at the end of the day, it is okay. I don't personally have anything against it. I do like this gear look, too. To the ears. And then the eyes, definitely Spider-Man. They're a little bit elongated and a little bit pointy. It makes it look a little bit devious, but that's okay. It's a, it's a Spider-Man in armor. And then the light blue eyes are unique against the rest of the body. It doesn't match the blue of the shoulders. If I had any gripe, I would say he's a little bit toy bizish. You know what I mean? With the straight up and down torso, the hips that kind of spread a little too far. It definitely has Hasbro articulation, but it kind of has that throwback aesthetic to the whole overall proportions. Going over articulation, there is a hinge, I think, at the top of the neck. Come off. Yes, it does. Oh, it can bury the chin though. Not bad. Yeah, a little bit of tilt. Swivel. Hinges swivel at the shoulder and the shoulder pads are mounted down low so it rides the torso up. Kind of Star Wars-y. Then that swivels around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow. Oh, not bad. Now well, that's me pushing a little bit. It kind of works down, but still impressive. Hinge, swivel. Hinge of the torso goes forward. Arcs back. Swivel at the waist. The belt is a separate piece glued in the back. Ball coming out to the hip goes forward. Ooh, back. Out getting a little bit better, especially on a Spider-Man figure. Swivel at the thigh. This armor plate seems to be a separate piece. Double knee. Oh, so close. Boop. Hinge at the ankle goes, well, the armor gets in the way. Back, forward, not bad. Oh, well, it's a separate assembly that rotates above the joint. And then there's forward facing pin for some rocker. For accessories, he doesn't come with extra hands, which is a shame because these are nicely detailed and every Spider-Man should have Two whip hands, two fists, two wall crawling. That's just how it is at this point. But he does come with this, which at first you think, man, that's weird. What the hell is that? But it's actually this. And <laughs> I would have never thought I needed one of these. But now that I have it, 
it's pretty awesome. Let's save the comparisons and open up the other Gamerverse Spider-Man. Everything I just said about the spider armor, it goes for the Velocity suit figure too. But I do like the overall look of this a little bit better. The proportions are a bit more muscular. It V's out up towards the chest. Same gap in the thighs, but it works as an overall figure. I don't know, it, this is just a little bit more powerful. Plus I, like, plus I like to how the colors play off each other on this figure better. There's the reds, there's the blues, and instead of white, we get this light blue color that is actually from the eyes over here. But my personal preference, I like how the colors are integrated all together. They blend a little bit better here. All of these lines are actually sculpted into the body. So for the two Gamerverse Spider-Mans in this wave, uh, they're both unique sculpts. Plus looking at the sculpted detail work, this one actually comes off as a little bit more armor-like than the armored Spider-Man. But it doesn't work any texture into the colors. A little bit more Spider-Man-like. And that's on top of all the reds being a shiny, smooth plastic, while the blues are a little bit more matte. There's a sheen to it, but it's not as shiny as the red. And that all carries on up to the head. There's sculpted detail that's kind of lost inside the red and the shininess, but the blue and the black of the eyes just stand out nicely. It veers a little bit further away from what we're used to with Spider-Man eyes, but again, I kind of like this. It, it's a change that I'm okay with. If they had taken a classic Spider-Man design and just thrown these eyes into it, then I probably wouldn't like it as much. But because of the whole overall redesign, I'm completely good with it. In fact, the more and more I look at this, I like how the spider legs work their way down the design, down Spider-Man's actual limbs. It's easy to break up, but at the same time, it's an action figure. This time around, there's a little bit more room up inside the head, forward and back at least. You can see the hinge and then the ball up there gets good up, goes all the way down, but tilt is non-existent. I'm done. It does swivel. It seems the shoulder pad is a separate piece from the shoulder. It doesn't really matter though. It hinges up, swivels around, rotation at the bicep, double elbow, pretty much all the way up. I didn't notice there was black on the hands that kind of ties up to the eyes because there's not really a lot of black. Well, there's no more black on the body. I like that. <laughs> I'm finding stuff as I'm going along. Hinge at the wrist and then some rotation. Hinge at the torso, forward a little bit, arcs back more, swivel at the waist. Ball coming out to the hip, comes all the way up. Back, not so much. Out, again, improvement. Thigh swivel, double knee, oh, no a little too muscled. Hinge at the ankle goes all the way back, forward, and then forward facing pin for rocker. Again, I'm gonna bring it up. Fist, thwip hand, that's all he comes with. Spider-Mans should have a plethora of hands. But he does come with this. Again, another web accessory I did not know I wanted, but now I need more of them. That slips over his shoulders and in just one movement with one little accessory, Spider-Man has defeated his foe. Let's throw this on here, ultimate humiliation. It's such a simple little concept. It's beautiful how well it works. Both Game Reverse Spidey stand at about six and an eighth inch tall. Velocity looks a little bit more bulky though, but they fit pretty well with the Marvel Legends Game Reverse PS4 Spider-Man and then the Scarlet Spider. Next up, let's take a look at the master of Kung Fu himself, Shang-Chi. When they put the capes through the tray, always try to remove the body through the front and then bring the cape through the back. It's just easier that way. I spent many a year trying to drag these through and I was never comfortable with that, so out the back. And here's where we learn where most of the paint budget for this series went. Nipples. I'm so used to seeing action figures without nipples that seeing them on there, it kind of throws me off. It makes it a little bit more realistic. It's hard for my eye to decipher if this is reuse or not, but it is from the Sunfire slash Scarlet Spider body. The legs though, the musculature looks the same, but there's this cloth wrinkle look to it right there. Then down here is definitely new. And then of course the head. But it's blowing my mind how different it looks with this all in flesh tone. I don't know, I'm like, oh, a whole new body, but it's not. Yeah, he's a little bit jacked, <laughs> he's a little bit muscled, but at the same time, we're talking about comic book characters here. But besides the nipples, which I keep bringing up, the paintwork down here is also nice. It's just dots on a yellow line at the bottom of some red pants. I don't know, it completely works for this character. Would I have liked to seen the classic full-on gi? Uh, yeah, I would have. But at the same time, we finally have a Shang-Chi. <laughs> That's awesome. The belt is a separate piece. It likes to ride up as you're posing it around, and it doesn't really have a tie. I would have liked to seen... A, a knot and then some streaming off ribbon or something. You know, kind of like this. Is it kind of crazy? Does it throw some comic book action into the overall figure? Yeah, but for this character, 
I'm completely good with this, especially since it doesn't really get in the way of any articulation. I love the hair sticking out from above the headband. It sticks a little bit out right here, but that had to be done to get out of the way of articulation, so I can't fault a toy company for doing that. Of course, you can shift the head forward, move that gap to the front, and it's not quite as jarring. The elbows were tight as hell when I got it out of the package. Same for the torso. It's a heavy click, but the biggies were the hinges at the ankle. I'm not sure if this foot is reuse. It seems awful chunky on top right here. And then the ankle itself seems a little bit wide, but I don't know. I'm okay with that. But man, the detents here is there, there, and maybe there. And I understand needing a strong base, and I appreciate that, but man, that is tough. It makes it a tad tougher to stand because the bottom of the feet are rounded, but still he's standing there you go going over articulation which being the master of kung fu shang chi needed and hasbro completely came through here at the top of the neck there is a hinge with a ball and they left plenty of room up inside the head for all kinds of movement shift forward and back which means up can look all the way down there's my tilt swivel butterfly shoulder gets a lot of back forward the shoulder runs into the pec right there lift the arm up you get a little bit more arm hinges up past 90, swivels around, rotation at the bicep, double elbow, you work the top first and then the bottom and you get plenty of movement. Hinge and swivel. Hinge at the torso, like I said, it's tough, but pretty good. Arc back, swivel at the waist, hidden by the belt. Ball at the hip comes forward, oh, past 90. Nice back, out. Not as much as I would care to have on a character like this. He definitely can't kick straight up sideways. He actually kicks higher going forward and back. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, no. The bottom of the pants get in the way. Still damn impressive, though. Swivel at the pants line. Ankle hinges back all the way. Forward. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he's packaged with two hands that have this claw kind of look, but split between the two fingers. Easily pop out. He comes with two flat hands. Comes with two fists. Comes with two more tense spread out clawed hands and then there's two grip hands and the grip hands are for his ornate nunchucks itty bitty detail but i like the dragon heads here on the end one is sculpted with a straight chain and then the other is sculpted at 90 degrees and while i would prefer a real chain or some kind of articulation here at the same time i don't know i have several sets of nunchucks that are real chain and they just kind of lay there so i'm kind of okay with this it's gonna stay right there hanging loose He's about to whoop some ass. This one I think of more action, like he's swinging it. But at the same time, it just seems really stiff. There is this though, and yeah. Okay, I'm good. Shang-Chi stands at about six and a quarter inches tall. And then here he is with Scarlet Spider and Daredevil, who is on the old Bucky Cat body. And then let's go with Superior Octopus. Second tray, Force Tentacles. Hmm. As someone who read Superior Spider-Man all the way through, yep, I actually read something, but didn't read afterwards, I'm unfamiliar with this costume, but at the same time, Oh man, do I love the color scheme here. There's just something Spider-Man-y about it, but also Doc Ocky. At this point, I'm just speaking gibberish, I guess. If you glance by, you just see green, gray, black, but you look closer, it's actually an octopus logo on his chest. Kind of silly when you really stare at it, but at the same time, you see this swinging by and you're not going to notice it, so it works, for me at least. But then you get some Spider-Man instances here and there that works its way to the back. So... I don't know, it's a nice, simple thing. Oh, there's some gray down here too. But not knowing why it was designed like this or the story at this point, I don't know if he's good guy, bad guy, just judging it from this. Ooh, I love it. I thought it was reusing this body again, like with Shang-Chi, and I think it's the same legs. You get that same kind of duck look to the feet, same arms, same butterfly joints, but we get to the mid torso articulation and it's a ball joint. I don't know if they did it because it doesn't break the octopus logo up as much as a hinge would have, or if this is just something new that they're going to. But hey, I will take new articulation any day of the week, especially if I can do this. It's a little thing, but at the same time, it's a huge step forward. I just really like this movement. The hands, I'm not sure if they're reused from somewhere. They have this armor plate on the back with the green dot. And there's also some sculpt work to the knuckles. But the bracers are separate pieces. You can rotate those around, move them up and down a little bit. Then the head is a new sculpt because the goggles here are actually raised up, which I'm just now realizing are also a Dr. Octopus element brought into this costume. The black lines are just painted on. They're not actually sculpted. Same for the octopus logo. Why do I like this so much? For articulation, there's a hinge with a ball at the top of the neck. Again, plenty 
of room in there to look up. Can bury the chin. Unfortunately, no tilt, but he can do this. Swivel, butterfly joint at the shoulder. Again, good range to the back. Comes forward, raise it up. You can go even more. Hinge of the shoulder, comes up, swivels around. Rotation, double elbow, not a lot of cutout up at the bicep, which is weird because Shang-Chi goes further than this. What's going on? Hingy, swivelly. You want to talk about this some more? Let's talk about this some more. Look at that. That is amazing. Swivel at the waist, ball at the hip, comes up, back, not so much. Out, yeah. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, oh, 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 not quite, oh, bing. Hinge at the ankle goes all the way back. Forward, not bad. Then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, he comes with this backpack which all the tentacles, as you saw, were in their own tray. So I'm just kind of guessing where these go. I'm okay with this configuration though, because all the claws are coming forward. There's two pegs on the backpack, two holes in the back. That plugs in very securely and not bad. It looks a little bit random. And once again, I'm gonna have to complain that these are not bendy wire. I'm sure with some heat, you could reposition them, cool them down, put them where you want. I do like the smaller ones though, because they don't really weigh them down. It doesn't pull back on them. There is a peg on the end where you can move pop back on there first. That allows rotation at the end of the tentacle for the claw. It takes up a lot of real estate, but it does add some dynamic element to what could be considered a boring look. As much as I love this, it is a little bit simplistic. Superior Ox stands at six and a quarter inches tall. Here he is with that Bucky Cat body Daredevil and then a Spider-Man, just a comic book Spider-Man. And then here he is with his original look. <laughs> and look at the difference in the tentacles. The old one is way thicker, but also way heavier. I had to lean him forward a little bit to get him to stand. How about a little white rabbit? Oh, and I was warned about this. Uh, if you're not careful here, you can bring Break the tip off of the umbrella. So I'm gonna chop it out and see what happens. Get through there. Yeah. And surprisingly, we're treated to another almost 100% new sculpt. Almost. I think the chest is reused from Typhoid Mary and the legs maybe reuse, I'm not sure. But we get a new coat, it lays against the body really well, conforms to the shape. We get a new abdomen with this watch chain coming across and then of course down to the watch. Furry boots, which are completely furry. I would have liked to seen a little bit more wash here to bring out the detail, but ooh, those look fantastic. Around the neck, there is this loose bow tie that works perfectly. And then even the head is a new sculpt. Sure, it looks like most of the other females in the line and the hair may look familiar with the ears sticking up out of it there had to be some re-sculpting done. It is definitely Marvel Legends, but the tweaks make it different from what we've seen before. I'm not sure if it's the same for everybody's, but the eyes kind of look like they're looking to the right and the blue kind of missed on this side. But I do like how the metallic blue stands out against the plainness of the white and the whisker lines and the pink. Then the hair has a nice wash to bring out all the detail up there, which makes me kind of miss a wash down here even more. So a lot of new sculpt, but there is a clunkiness to it. The left knee is a little bit loose, so it causes well, not too much problem standing up apparently. But also the thigh swivel is in the usual place. But if you try to not look at the T-joint sticking out, if you rotate it, her knees start buckling in. And if you try to compensate for that, it breaks the thigh up a lot. For some reason that bugs me. And then the coat is not the softest material in the world. It gets up and out of the way, but you get closer to the torso where it's glued down or held on by the shoulders. It really makes it difficult to articulate the torso. You can go side to side and you go back really, really far, but not a lot of forward. And then the bow tie along with the weight of the hair likes to kick the head back. Well, there's some hurdles in getting her posed, but at the same time, there's plenty of articulation to get her posed. Speaking of that, there is a hinge at the top of the neck with a ball going up into the head. You can already see there's a lot of tilt. Not a lot of down because of the bow. Not a lot of back because of the hair. Same for swivel, you can kind of work it around. But look at the tilt. Hinge of swivel at the shoulder, comes up past 90, rotates. Hinge of swivel at the elbow, unfortunately it just goes to 90 and then rotates. Wristy, wristy. Talked about the ball joint at the torso. There is movement, but hard to manipulate because of the jacket. Ball coming out to the hip, comes forward, back, out, about Spider-Man-ish. Rotation at that ball joint, but there's also a swivel below. Double knee, no, not quite. Rotation at the boot, hinge at the ankle. Oh, goes back further than I thought it would. Forward, and then forward facing pin. For accessories, she comes, comes with this umbrella, and even holding it like this, it wants to bend the tip over a little bit. But the umbrella is folded down, it's tied, it looks good. It's in pink, it's got a handle. I'm guessing this is some kind of shooting device because of the blast coming out. And while the rubberiness will probably keep me from breaking it, it seems just very floppy down here. But it looks pretty good in hand, even though, well, she can't point it straight forward. Well, kinda. 
height wise she stands at uh six and a quarter to the top of her head and then seven inches to the top of her ears which makes her about as tall as invisible woman but actually taller than typhoid mary and then in case you want to give her minions <laughs> This looks pretty good. Finally, for carded figures, there is Vulture. Not as exciting <laughs> as I was thinking, but I, I like the reuse here and I like the new parts. Basically, the body is reuse of this Spider-Man, which may be reused from another Spider-Man, but it's this body. It's muscular, but it is thin, so I feel like it works for tombs pretty well. Basically, it's these hands, which actually makes the proportions look a little bit more frail, a little bit more thin, only because they are oversized a little bit. It's just a green body with some new holes punched in the back which we'll get to the accessories i've heard some complaints that the body doesn't have the stripes or the lines over the whole thing and i can see that it, that was part of the design for a long long time so i'm not going to defend this just being painted on and how subtle they made it but at the same time it it makes for a neat effect it almost has that comic book bodysuit look to it while just a little hint of detail get a new furry type collar piece around the neck again like white rabbit's boots I wish there was a little bit more wash here to bring out the detail, but the shadows do pretty well. All the paint, for this figure at least, was put up at the head. Just look at that creepy old bastard. <laughs> it's Vulture. It's cartoony, it's comic booky, but at the same time, <laughs> those liver spots do a lot to go, he probably shouldn't be flying around the city. He's frail. I really like the pinkness around the eyes. Again, it's very subtle, but it's very effective. And the eyes themselves, that metallic tint to it, it just does so much. The size of the ears, perfect. We've talked enough about the head. Let's move on. For articulation, there is your hinge. There's your ball up in there. Notice the gap around it. Very nice up, which for this character, you definitely need. Looks down, a little bit of tilt, swivel. Butterfly joint at the shoulder, nice range. Arm hinges, whoa, up past 90. Rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow. Oh, yeah. Big hand hinge, big hand swivel. Hinge at the torso. Well, okay, that's not as impressive. A little bit of crunch. Not a lot of arc back either. Swivel at the waist. Ball at the hip comes, ooh, past 90. Back, not so much. Out, mm-hmm. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, oh, bing. Hinge at the ankle, goes all the way back. Oh, nice forward too. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, we've talked about the head probably for too long. That does pop off and we get an alternate head with the helmet nice sculpt work here just with the lines that <laughs> some people probably wish went all the way down and this helmet is supposed to represent blackie drago a different version of vulture who was younger but this is essentially adrian tombs in his helmet don't get me wrong i still love the sculpt it's still old man at this time not smiling but there's the subtle pink there's the gray eyebrows but i feel like this definitely should have been a younger head under there mostly so you can do this but then it's a vulture figure so you're definitely going to get some wings and I don't remember ever getting a Marvel Legends actually having to put the wings on. And there is just a slight bit of paintwork here where it fades from a darker green to a lighter green. A bit more apparent on the bigger part. There's definitely a left and right here. You can see the sculpt work on this side and then flat on the other. Well, there's a little bit of line work, but not like this side. And I was trying to figure out which way was which, and I think there is a slight little R right there. A little bit more visible right there. Plug this with the sculpt work to the outside in the back of the shoulder. There's actually a kind of a locking tab to it. That's kind of impressive. This one doesn't want to lock in. There may be some glue involved at some point. It adds weight to the figure, but let's see what happens. There you go. I can live with that. I'm flying. That's my old man voice. Vulture stands at well, what seems to be the average for this wave at six and a quarter inches tall with a wingspan of about 13 inches. And then here he is with the older Marvel Legends Vulture. That one has all the sculpted lines. It has actual feathers around the wing. It's more of a cartoony old man look and then the wash to bring out the feathers around the neck. It makes for a hard decision. They both have their highs and their lows. The new Hasbro one is a little less detailed in the sculpt department and paint, but man, I hate ball hips. I really, really do. I blame nobody for wanting to keep this one in their display, but for me, it's going to be <laughs> evil Picard over here. Engage. And then we need to build us some Demogoblin. You put your left leg on. Oh, that's very tight. Put your right leg on. Right arm. 
Left arm. Get in there. Cape. Head. Head doesn't want to go on. I had to actually heat that up to get it on there. I'd probably recommend doing that to the legs too because they were a pain in the ass. And then for the flame glider, this stand, I, it may have been used in Marvel Legends before, but I remember it from Star Wars Black Series. Came with the Biker Scout and you actually get three different positions here. You can put it here for the tallest, you turn it, there's the shortest, and then there's the medium height. There you go. But looking at it all together, not being the biggest fan of Demogoblin, I was falling out of comic books at that point, but I understand that this is reuse from the goblins before. There's the arms, boots are reuse, and then the torso where it looks like it's actual cloth over the body, which I like. And then the cape is the same tattered one from Hobgoblin. But we do get this new belt with this demon head belt buckle, this strap coming up and around, and then the tattered look for, I guess, kind of simulate the pants. And that matches the gloves, the red inside, the blue outside this chain looking thing. Oh, well, that's a separate piece. And chain looking thing, it's sculpted chain. And there's the head. Again, the red peeking out from inside the blue, but the head is what really sells this for me. It's just freaking demonic. And it's not the possessed hobgoblin head either. It's an all new sculpt, same tattered look. And that's on top of the awesome paintwork in there. There's a nice wash to the skin tone that I kind of wish carried down to here. Then the red of the tongue, the dirtiness of the teeth, and especially the orange eyes, that just sets it off. It's a character I didn't care about until I got it in plastic form, which happens a lot to me, I know. But now that I have it in hand, uh, ooh, I really like Demogoblin. The cape doesn't like to sit down, but eh, he's gonna be on a glider most of the time anyway, so whee! Articulation wise, it's pretty much your standard. It's a ball on top of a hinge. The hood kind of gets in the way of motion. Well, I don't know, he's got good down. Arm hinges up to about, well, right there. And it swivels around. Bicep, double elbow, uh, the tatteredness of the glove gets in the way. What can I say? Hinge, swivel. Hinges the torso, kicks forward a little bit, arcs back a lot. Swivel at the waist, hip comes way up. Back, out, swivel at the thigh. Double knee, uh, not quite. Rotation at the boot, ankle hinges back, forward, and forward facing pin. All that helps him stand on his flame glider. This thing's awesome. I love translucent plastic. Sculpt is kind of soft and chewy, but again, it's supposed to be flame, so I, it totally works. And you just thread the toes through, and that's just quick. Well, he's kind of leaning too far forward. Let's fix this. Oh yeah, that totally works. And it makes me wish Green Goblin and Hobgoblin came with these same kind of stands. Speaking of those guys though, this looks awesome. Full disclosure, I just opened these two up. For some reason, I never opened opened them and now I'm completely happy to have three goblins all at the same time. Hidewise though, they stand at about six and three eighths. So at the end of the day, I, what some people may consider a lackluster kind of wave, I don't know, I, I enjoyed it. Of course, I'm pretty easy to please. I mean, it's all new characters. Well, maybe a couple of replacements, but uh, yeah. Me personally, I'll be replacing Vulture on the shelf. I, I just like that Hasbro aesthetic. It's not quite as in your face with the extreme sculpt and paint work. Nothing against that, but with the rest of my display, this just fits a little bit better. White Rabbit, a new character for the shelf. Very striking, even though I've never read a story with her in it. But I'm a sucker for bunny stuff. And another female for the shelf, never heard a thing. The two Spider-Mans. Uh, a lot of classic collectors look at it as, why is this gamer shit creeping into my Marvel Legends? But that game is damn amazing. There's a lot of fans of Spider-Verse. This fits into that. So all I can say is if you don't like it, don't buy it. Shang-Chi, a character I'm much more familiar with and have wanted a figure for a long, long time. To finally check that one off the list, even though it's not his perfect look, it's Shang-Chi. He's on the shelf, no ifs, ands, or buts. Superior Octopus, again, not familiar, but the look is so striking to me that, oh man, I love it. He kind of edged his way up the way for me as one of my favorites. The tentacles are a little bit lacking, but we can work with that. And then for Demogoblin, you may have noticed that I didn't do a comparison with the old Toy Biz version. That's because I think I had it at some point, but it either got foddered or sold or lost or something. That's how much I don't care about Demogoblin, but give me a figure that fits into the rest of my display like this, that's awesome looking, then he ends up in the display. And some people may say, well, it's a regular size figure as the Build-A-Figure again. And different people look at it a different way. To me, the Build-A-Figure concept is just extra shit that comes with the figures I'm buying. I would prefer to get big hulking Build-A-Figures. It feels like a little bit more bang for my buck, but at the same time, like I said, I think of this as extra. So small, big, medium, large, 
I'm good with it. And don't get me wrong, I can see why some people may look at this wave and think that it's lackluster. Some people don't want to replace their vulture because the old one was good. Some people don't know White Rabbit or Superior Octopus or don't play the PlayStation game. Or again, prefers the Toy Biz Demogoblin or don't care about Demogoblin at all. And then Shang-Chi is definitely a classic type character that modern fans may not care for. So. It's a little bit of something for everyone, but not as much full wave appeal to most people. Me, <laughs> I get some plastic, I'm happy. So yeah, it's Marvel Legends, it's Spider-Man, it's new characters. I love it. Now only the first shipments got out this early, there's more to come. So if you're interested in the wave, go pre-order yours at Dorkside Toys. As always, much love to the plus if you're in a position to support the channel or you want the videos a little bit early, go over there, check that out. If you like the review, comment, like, subscribe on whatever platform you're watching this on. But whatever platform that may be, I will always catch you on the foosh.